People don't just sit around a junkyard for a month. Well, Mr. Wood said he was tired of being on the road and wanted some peace and quiet. He wanted to catch up on his reading. It's not like there was money in it. That man read night and day. Read? Read what? Exactly. Books. Hundreds of them. Look at all these. Mr. Woods brought all of these with him. Well, most were delivered when he bought out stock from the old library. All of these are about mathematics and science. Same here. Mr. Woods was a big science nut. Once, he spent 14 hours sitting in this rocking chair, flipping a half dollar. 14 hours. Weird, huh? Said, uh, heads for better odds. Something about the surface and, uh, uh, aerodynamics. Except for dimes. He said never bet with a dime. Didn't say why. Factoring statistics. Physics and random probabilities. Yeah, I think I'll wait for the movie on that epic. Making odds even. May I? Jared's left a message. We're close. We're nowhere, except where Jared wants us. Why do men want to learn so much? Damn good question. Table nine is killing us. I'm on my way. This guy's got to be a cheat. Oh no, there's no way he's counting eight decks. Another winner. <laughs> How much is he up? Over a hundred grand has got to be. What? Chief Mr. Morgan approved the increased credit limit. Who the hell is this guy? <laughs> What's he drinking? Dr. Pepper. Opera Cristal. Cristoli. I tried that. He wants Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper. Heads. Ten in a row. All bets are down. My luck. Victor, I couldn't even win the big half of a wish ball. Hi. I'm Ivy. Mr. Falson. Hit me. House stands on 17. 22. House wins. I'm a total jinx. You can only be a jinx if you believe in luck. Do you believe in luck? No. Blackjack. Oh. Neither do I. And another blackjack. That's it. I'll deal with Mr. Morgan. Shut him down. So much for jinx. Let it ride. There are pretenders among us, geniuses with the ability to become anyone they want to be. In 1963, a corporation known as the Center isolated a young pretender named Jared and exploited his genius for their research. Then one day, their pretender ran away.
If he's counting cards, I can't catch it. You think this is a game? Well, this is Las Vegas. Isn't everything? This is the guy, Mr. Morgan. Like to count cards, do you? Davis? His name is Jared Felson. I ran his ID. Cruise ships to Monte Carlo. Uh, didn't find a file on him anywhere. I'm honored. Mr. Felson has selected the Marquis Casino for his first scam. Who here thinks that makes Mr. Felson a complete idiot? Maybe your security chief didn't dig deep enough. Why don't you try the FBI file under RICO? You run rackets? Hello, Mr. Morgan. You set this up. You knew we'd have this conversation. Not bad for a complete idiot. Where are your blackjack winnings? I had them delivered to Mr. Morgan's office by a very nice young lady named Ivy. You're giving me the money back. Money doesn't interest me. If not money, what does interest you? I'm not here to make a fool of you, Mr. Morgan. Or to rip you off. So what do you want? Excuse me? You have an incredible security system, Mr. Morgan. It's a shame no one here knows how to use it. The bet was a thousand dollars. What did the dealer pay out? Purple chip, a grand. Meet Martin Rawlings. He's been dealing blackjack here for ten years. He's the best dealer we have. Well, that's too bad because he's about to lose his job. He used to work at a magic club in Kentucky. His specialty, sleight of hand. An extra thousand for the plant. He passes it to the courier. Gave the chip to the waitress. Where is she going? Forget the courier. Focus on the chip. Because it and dozens like it are on their way to your security chief's mace holster. Mr. Morgan, remove it. Please, I've worked here for ten years. All of a sudden, some jerk in a shiny Help suit. Help him. Over ten thousand dollars. Get him out of here. It's not gonna stop here. A casino. It's always a target. So, Mr. Felson, what do you want? Five percent of what you don't lose while I'm in charge. Don't you little ladies forget. Come see my show tonight. There's no cover, there's no minimum, and there's free hot hors d'oeuvres. Huh? <laughs> I'll see y'all later. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Hey, here, Teddy Bear. You come to rub elbows with the king of rock and roll? No, I'm trying to understand this. You dress up in a rented costume and you pretend to be a dead singer? Singer. Son, do you have any idea who I am? Well, actually, I would have... You are looking at a national monument. Mount Rushmore in blue suede shoes. There is not a human being on God's green earth that has ever demanded the attention and respect of the man you are looking at at this very moment. Hey, Bernie, some guy at the craft table says he'll give you five bucks to goose his wife. I'll be right there. Well, my plan's back in. I'm going go. Thank you very much. That is the last of them. I've run every one of these through the mainframe, and I, I can still find no correlation. <laughs> Although there is something to be said for Jared's theory on the uh, aerodynamics of a 50 cent piece. <laughs> hey. Okay. Jared is trying to tell me something. 
And this book is the clue. That's a hell of a clue, Sid. Jared highlighted the entire book. But look at this age of statistics. He traced over all the number eights. Now, eight is Jared's favorite number, his favorite figure. He calls it upright infinity because of the way one loop coils into the next, never ending. Maybe your boy Wonder has turned into Brian Boitano. Mm -mm. Jared is looking for a purpose. He's playing games. Games? Games with numbers? High stakes games? High stakes poker? Baccarat? Well, that narrows it down to any of the thousands of gaming establishments on the planet. Any ideas where to start? I know just the man to see. Hello. Have you read this? It's it's very good. It's about this inquisitive little monkey named George. He was curious. I've only read it about a thousand times. Oh, well, good. Then maybe you can help me. Who is the man in the yellow hat? I don't know. Oh, well, thank you anyway. been asking for you. Asking for me? Exposing Davis' scam saved him more money than his creative accountant ever did. Steve Hanlon, Jared Felsen. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. Well, I want to thank you for helping us out. You know, here at the Marquis, we think of ourselves as family. Nothing worse than being betrayed by those close to you. It's really impressive the way you came in and cleaned house. I guess the only question I have is why. Why would a man I never heard of, never laid eyes on, step in to help my business out of the blue like that? I'm a fan, Mr. Hamlin. You took a no-name video store, you turned it into an empire. You listen to people, you give them what they want. I like that. You study people, too. Master your space. I lecture at Brownstone. That must have been uh, 12 years ago. It was 11. And it was the first time you used family first as the company motto. You were there? <laughs> no, sir. But I bought the cassette. I wore out my tape player. <laughs> Peter, watch out. I might steal this man from corporate. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you, sir. If we finally got corruption out of the marquee. I would like to help keep it that way. Jared, you have my permission to do whatever it takes. I thank you, sir. Jared, this is my wife, Kitty. Kitty, Jared Felson, our new security chief. Nice to meet you. It's been a pleasure, Mr. Felson. I saw your picture in the lobby. Uh, Kitty used to headline the show here. Uh, I need to steal Mr. Hamlin for a moment. Nice to meet you, Mr. Felson. Nice to meet you. So you're a company man, huh? I agree with Mr. Hanlon's theories on family, if that's what you mean. The only thing Hanlon likes about family is appropriating parts. Spends millions building this playground and proclaims families now have a reason to vacation together. And you don't think they do? At a casino? Jared, people who never even dreamed of gambling now think it's sanctioned by God. Had a few flashy arcades, even the damn kids go home broke. Don't let Hanlon fool you. You may talk the new corporate attitude of this town. Deep down, 
He's still old, I guess. Sorry it took me so long to get here, Maggie. You're watching The Pretender on NBC. She was all alone. Well, she's not alone anymore. No offense. Uh, she isn't going to wake up. I know. But it doesn't mean she can't hear me. My name's Jared. Name's Buddy. Nice to meet you. Buddy. Mm -hmm. If anything happens to her, will you page me? I didn't mean to sound cold before, but uh, I've learned not to get too attached. But it is nice to know someone gives a damn. Yeah. What are you doing here? You should be on stage. Oh, no. There, there's no more stage for the game. The casino fired me. I'm sorry. Did it have something to do with that bird thing? Bird? The goose. <laughs> no. no, they said they had complaints about the show. So I put on 20, 30 pounds. You think it's easy being the idol of millions? 
I would guess no. Well, you're damn right it isn't. I sacrificed everything. I did it because I, I loved it. It's what the people wanted. I just wish some of those casino bigwigs could spend one hour wearing the cape. Huh? Just one hour. I'll tell you what, they'd, they'd walk away singing a different tune. I should guarantee you. Couldn't you get a job at another casino? No. No, buddy boy. After 24 years of making people smile, singing the songs and spreading the good vibrations, afraid of seeing the line for the cave. Well, we had that one hell of a ride, though, didn't we? I bet you did. Oh, look, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm spilling my guts, and I don't even know your name. Jared. Felson. Bernie Baxley. Well, it's nice to meet you, Bernie Baxley. Thanks. Jared? I'm scared. Of what? Him. Sydney. Jared. Good to hear from you. It's been a while. Where are you calling from? You'll figure that out sooner or later. I'm counting on later. Counting on or betting on? You are so well read. You know something? It's such a pleasure to have the freedom to read whatever I want these days. Why the games, Jared? It's in the mail. Jared. Trouble understanding the account totals from July. The guy even works on his day off. You pay me to locate discrepancies, and I can't reconcile the figures against last year, specifically July. Set it aside. Set it aside. Jared, there's a reason those numbers don't match. One of our showgirls was attacked in the parking garage. Our revenue dropped 30% for three days. It was an anomaly. Not to mention a publicity nightmare. Fortunately, the Megabuster jackpot hit two days later and everybody came back. Sometimes Lady Luck even smiles on the house. the escort, Mr. Felton. None of us walk alone anymore, not since Maggie. Maggie? She was the woman that was attacked. Right. You knew her? Well, I'd seen her in the show and around backstage. She... I, I read in the paper there was no evidence of a robbery. No. You know, the night it happened, the showroom was completely packed. It was the of July. Maggie was so happy. She just landed the lead in a big show in Atlantic City. Maggie was leading town. Yeah, I guess so. I know I would. It happened right here. Gardenias. Excuse me. 
Um, Maggie always wore a gardenia in her hair. I know it sounds strange, but every time I pass this spot, I swear I can smell gardenias. Thanks. Cool. Drive safe. I made it inside. She doesn't hear me. The hallway's dark. It smells like... I'm getting closer. I know they made her do things that she didn't want to do. Did she do something wrong? Keep going, Jared. Now focus on the killer and not the victim. Something's wrong with this picture, too, Sydney.
Buddy's luck just ran out. Thanks for the escort, Mr. Bell. It was my pleasure. Now, you're absolutely sure that you don't know who this man in the yellow hat was? Sorry. My car's right here. Well, have a good night. Come on, Sydney. We have a plane to catch. Stay mobile, son. You know, I was thinking about heading back east. You know, try Branson. Vegas is strange. Yeah. Not much in a city like this. An old dog like me. Thanks. Special piece of Graceland memorabilia. But it's very nice. Oh, you know. Right. You should see the house in person. It's uh, the king named it for his mama. People talk about how Elvis let himself go there near the end. How he stopped caring about the people, about the music. To me. Just the opposite. The opposite? Yeah. He cared too much. He ran so fast. So quick. He didn't have anything left to finish the race. Too bad I won't be able to finish it for him. You never know, Bernie. Sometimes a change of scenery can do you good. not the arrangement. Actually, to me it was. Your boy is in the uh, Marquis Casino, Vegas. It's always a pleasure taking white collar to the clean. <laughs> I know what you mean. I brought 200,000 with me. I knew you'd be such a cheap day. Come on, Sid. We're going to Las Vegas. Because maybe even you could get lucky. Hospital administration. Can you hold, please? Uh, yes. 
Yeah, it's on hold. Yes, I would like to arrange to pay Maggie Blair's hospital bills. They have? Could you tell me by whom? Thank you. Just like you paid for Maggie's hospital bills, for this funeral. You found the videotape, didn't you? What? The real security tape from the night of the attack. The one that Peter made sure the police never saw. It shows Maggie leaving the marquee with your husband. They were having an affair, weren't they? Who are you? Somebody doesn't believe that Maggie deserved her fate. I don't know what you're talking about. You don't have to pretend like it's not happening anymore. You don't understand. He doesn't mean to hurt me. Yes, he does. This is your husband's rap sheet. You're not the first person that he's hurt. And unless he stopped, Maggie's not going to be the last person he kills. explain what it feels like. NBC next. To know that you're being watched. He wants her. And he won't stop till he has 
was her. This guy's fantasy is full of blood. A ticking bomb. My boy's at it again. Why are you doing this? About to explode. Ah! Profiler, an all new episode, NBC Next. a serious problem and I'd like to discuss it with you. One on one. Say tomorrow morning, around 10. Ivy, it's Mr. Phelps. I was wondering if you could do me a favor. Dem status minus contus et fare. Bitte. Hello. Peter. Jared Felsen. Jared, what's up? I've discovered an even larger problem than before. Is it Davis again? No. But it's big. It's something you need to handle. Personal. Can you meet me tomorrow morning? Around 10? Absolutely. I'll see you there. Senor Gerald, five nights and you don't sleep. <laughs> Too much to do, Blanca. Not enough hours in the day. Jorge. Has leído este libro? Sí, mucho. Tengo cinco niños. Ay, Blanca, perfecto. ¿Quién es el hombre en el sombrero amarillo? Mm, no sé, señor. No sé. Ay, gracias. Blanca. Sí. Would you do me a favor? Peter, come on, we don't have much time. This is about, it's about a hundred grand walking out of this casino right under your very nose. Mr. Hamlin, from Jared Felton. He said he'd meet you in the security bay as soon as he can. Somebody has been double counting the cash outlays. Based on my findings, over a hundred grand is being skimmed off the top every Tuesday cash pickup. You think Davis was behind us? I'm not sure, but it's bigger than one guy. An accounting scam tied into the armored car courier. For every three hundred thousand dollars that's deposited on paper, another hundred grand is being dropped off at a second locale. But if we keep this scam going, we find out where the locale is. We can bring down everybody that's been ripping off the marquee. Why don't we just bring in the cops? Peter, think about this. If you pull this off, you are going to be Steve Hanlon's twenty million dollar hero. <laughs> Showtime. Right, Mrs. 
David. Uh, Mr. Davis worked for me in more ways than one. I'm Peter Morgan. I run the marquee. It's business as usual. You understand? Sure. Business as usual. Take the skin to the drop, deposit the rest in the bank. We'll see you next Tuesday. Okay. Thank you very much. That was exciting. Guy fell for everything I said. You must be a complete idiot. Find him. Think you'd be here? Surprise. You won't believe what I've been doing. Bet <laughs> me. Business as usual. Take the skin to the drop, deposit the rest in the bank. We'll see you next Tuesday. Okay. Steve, I wasn't really taking the money. We, we There's were. There's a great uh, deal of unreported cash leaking this casino. I know, and, and uh, a great deal of cash is going in your Swiss bank account. I don't have a Swiss account. Electronic transfer for $4.6 million. That is your signature, isn't it? I didn't do this. Tell it. Tell them the truth. I am sorry, Mr. Hanlon. I'm sorry you didn't catch this sooner. And the figure is closer to 4.8. Every instinct in my gut told me you were bad news. Steve, I didn't do anything wrong. Damn it. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything wrong. Neither did Maggie Blair. Oh. Detective Vincent, homicide. I'm looking for uh, Peter Morgan. Oh, he's in the meeting right now. I think he's asking for a raise. What's your radio call, Mr. Felsen? Is there a problem? Yes, there is. A couple of grifters trying a roulette scam. Call the LVPD and have them picked up.
let go of me. You might want to strip search this one. She could be palming chips. Oh, you bastard. You're just doing my job, ma'am. Head of security, you know. I will get you. You want to bet? Tails. Come on, man. Clip, no trash, no lint, nothing but this. And the usual. Señor Phoenix? Dígame. Para usted. got away. <laughs> so you're really going to release him back into the wild, huh? That's the plan. Living creatures. They don't belong in captivity. <laughs> <laughs> Next Saturday, the pretender will see you in court. How long you been a lawyer? About seven minutes. To defend a total stranger. What the hell do you think you're doing? And tilt the scales of justice. They still haven't produced the murder weapon. The murder miss something feel free to jump in an all-new pretender next nbc saturday it was captain holland's job to get 250 passengers home for the holidays Merry Christmas.